Hey all, we have yet another Fusion 360 update to report on, so let's jump right into it. The first thing I'll do is delete some files? Wait, what? Well, as I jump into Fusion Team by clicking the project name, the reason I did this becomes evident. The long-awaited trash folder is here. As you'd expect from a trash folder, you'll find those deleted files and be able to restore them as needed. To be able to use this, you'll need to be admin of a project and working in a multi-user environment. The next thing is a little hard to demonstrate, but noteworthy. You Windows users have probably experienced your shortcut being moved, replaced, or stopped working after an update. Pretty annoying, right? Well, guess what? After this update, it shouldn't happen again. The new document tab behavior has already been improved after some quick feedback. Names are now better at maximizing to use as much of the tab space as possible, helping you to see the full name or more of it. Sticking with the tab theme, we've moved and renamed the create mesh section command with the tab UI, it makes more logical sense to put it under Create in the Solid tab. This avoids having to create a sketch, select a plane, and do all that before being able to find it in the menu. Remember the last time you went to break links in a design and having to do it one by one by one by one? Pretty time consuming, yeah? Well, now you'll enjoy the freedom of being able to break many links in one fell swoop. And the next time you go to measure, make sure to take advantage of the ability to turn on a secondary unit. Using this, we're sure to please our metric and imperial fans without compromise. Switching to edit a previously saved sheet metal part, you'll be pleased to no longer find this warning message, which seemed to pop up each and every time you open a sheet metal part. This message is unnecessary, and therefore, it's a goners. Next, we have a very handy change when creating a plane along a path. In the past, if you wanted a plane along a path one inch into the path, you'd have to measure the total length and use the proportional distance to define it. In this case, 15.6293%. But with this update, you can define it with a real, measured, physical distance. This change will allow for more precise locations to be used in determining where those features might start or end. But will also avoid moving when the path length is changed. Try to do that with yesterday's CAD. We have a number of great sketching enhancements to report as well. Starting with a couple on the spline front. Now when you project, and subsequently break that projection length, you won't be left with an uneditable noodle. Now they'll be converted to control point splines. This will help with things like creating complex loft profiles with subtle changes from profile to profile. Please note that even if the original spline is a fit point, it will become a control point spline after breaking the connection. In addition, those AutoCAD or DXF splines will come in as editable CV curves, making edits about a thousand times easier. This model might look a little familiar, that's because I used it in the last update to demonstrate that you could mirror with model edges. Well, guess what? We figured we could and should extend this to more potential mirrorees. Now you can choose model faces and work planes to mirror those sketches about, as long as they logically make sense. Finally, while moving or copying entities in Sketch, you can now take advantage of a whole new option, reorientation of the triad to the Sketch entities. This will intelligently adjust the triad to your selection of choice even all those splines you'll be projecting and inserting from DXF. On the generative design front, we have tons of great updates to report. The next time you copy, mirror, or pattern those connector geometries, they'll automatically be treated as obstacles like their parents they were derived from. A great little time saver since most all connectors, whether parents or copies, will likely be obstacles. As we go to define the manufacturing method for this, take note of a completely new option, two axis. Expanding manufacturing restraints is key to making generative design more accessible. So to be able to add two axis cutting this quickly is thrilling. This method will allow for users to create constant thickness designs that are suited for those water jet, laser, and plasma cutting methods. To use this preview, make sure to turn it on in your preferences. To help with collaboration, we've added the ability to share those generative results. Before, each individual user would need to solve a study to see those. Now when I send this over to Bryce, no time is lost, and no cloud credits are used resolving something that has already been solved. With the direct and instant access to these, he can give feedback quickly. It looks like he wants me to run both static and buckling studies on two potential designs. He'll be blown away at how fast I get results back to him, but don't let him in on our secret. The setup created in the generative workspace can now be transferred to our simulations. All those load cases, loads, constraints, and materials are all brought over and ready to go. All I need to do is hit solve. If the simulation indicates changes are required, they'll be simple. 
As you know, exported generative designs have editable T-splines in history. But because that doesn't make sense for a two-axis export, those will instead be built with a sketch and extrude. Of course, there are way more updates to this release that I didn't have time to show, including an important announcement for those of you who installed from the Mac App Store. To see the full what's new, check the link in the description, the link from Fusion 360, or the card shown here. Cheers.